to encourage you this morning from the psalm of the day, Psalm 27, a little bit about this psalm itself. It is written by King David, and Psalm 26, 27, and 28 are all part of a trilogy that David writes, and they all convey a different theme, but they all go together. Psalm 26 begins with an acknowledgement of who God is. Lord, you are mighty. You are powerful. I desire for my heart to be stilled. I desire for you to impart strength for you. And Psalm 26 ends with the exclamation of David, I'm going up to the house of the Lord, the tabernacle, the high place in Jerusalem. And here I'm going to stand because of who you are. And Psalm 27 takes up where that theme ends and expresses the confidence and strength that we have because of who God is. And then Psalm 28 concludes the trilogy by exclaiming how it's going to impact us in our life. Psalm 27 is an incredible portion of Scripture because it offers for us guidance and strength in every trial, difficulty, and situation in our life. As God directs David through inspiration to record this portion of Scripture, we have the strength and confidence that amidst whatever is going on in our lives, God is there. So remember, Psalm 26 ends with, I'm going up to the temple of the Lord. I'm going up to the tabernacle. And here my feet are fitted firmly in God's presence. So then Psalm 27 begins, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? So the Lord is my light. What does light do? Light shows you where to go. Light provides direction. If the power goes off in our homes and we have, don't have a candle or a flashlight nearby, we're kind of lost. We don't know where everything is. So too in our lives, when we are looking for direction, when we are yearning for answers, when we want purpose and meaning in our lives, ultimately that direction comes to us from the Lord himself as he reveals it to us in Holy Scripture. The Lord is my light, my salvation. Literally in the Hebrew, that word salvation is victory. The Lord is my victory. Of course, that conveys for us amidst uncertainties in our lives, we always keep our eyes focused on the truth of what Christ has done for us. Jesus Christ is our victory. Jesus Christ is our salvation. So when we're looking for guidance, when we're looking for answers, when we want things to be revealed to us, every aspect that we yearn for, we keep our other eye, our other focus on the cross of Christ. And because of that, Amidst the trials and uncertainties of our lives, we won't be afraid. Because the Lord is strength. The Lord provides for you and for me actively the strength that we so desperately seek. One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. So, What David is saying here is, as I am in this tabernacle, I know that my heart is stilled, not because of who I am, but because of who you are, because of what you give, and because of what you impart. And this too is a beautiful application for us in our lives. As we come together in worship, God stills us, God strengthens us, And he imparts to us the peace, as Paul says, that passes all understanding. Also, when the psalmist says, one thing I ask that I 
may seek that I may dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Ultimately, it is a prayer asking God to always be concerned about my faith and for me and my life to keep God truly as the dearest treasure all of my days. What shakes our faith? What makes us question God? What sometimes takes us away from the house of the Lord? Isn't it troubles? Troubles and trials and difficulties that we have. The psalmist says, in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe. That truly is one of the basic questions that we struggle with, isn't it? Why is there evil in the world? Why am I undergoing this trial? Why am I going through this specific tribulation? And sometimes, if we try and sort it out in our mind, we come up with the following conclusions. If God is willing to pre prevent evil, and he doesn't, or he can't, then ultimately he's not all-powerful. If God is able to prevent evil and suffering, but doesn't, then he's malevolent. So we go through this, this process in our mind, why am I going through this? Why am I enduring this tribulation? And ultimately, the answer is just the very fact that we have suffering, that we have trials, points us to a higher power that emphasizes the truth that the Lord overcame death itself. One of my favorite quotes from Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. in his letter, a letter from the Birmingham jail, says, there must be a higher divine law that defines what justice is. Other way, otherwise, there would be no way to tell if any human practice that is done is just or unjust. So put that in context, the very fact that we have trials and tribul tribulations underscores the fact that we live in a fallen world. But Jesus Christ came into this world, clothed in the flesh of humanity, to bear our sin and make us whole. Now, if you're following this, or maybe this next week you kind of go over it, maybe what you're thinking right now is, I have troubles, I have trials, I'm praying to the Lord, but they're not altered. The psalmist says, a little hard to see, but come and talk with me. And my heart responds, I am coming. Now when we undergo trials and troubles, we talk to God in our prayer. Prayer has the ability to change things. What prayer does not do, or God's attitude for prayer, is not this. For instance, we have a particular trial, trouble, tribulation, difficulty, and we want it removed, we want it altered, and it doesn't turn out the way that we were praying for. God does not say, sorry, I would have loved to give that to you, but you just didn't pray hard enough. If you would have just spent a few more hours in prayer, if you would have just maybe asked a few more people to pray for you, or done it longer, more fervently, then it would have been granted. It doesn't work that way. C.S. Lewis once says, prayer does not change God. It changes me. <clears throat> And amidst our trials and difficulties, prayer is a means by which God, through the Holy Spirit, 
settles our own hearts amidst our own tribulation. So amidst our trials and difficulties, we, we talk to God, we speak to God, we say, alter it, change it. But ultimately, we always must end with, give me peace. Strengthen my heart. Paul, in the book of Romans, reminds us that after we say amen, after we have, have closed the prayer and we have finished praying concerning whatever trial we might be going through, the Holy Spirit kicks in in our behalf and says, there's a few more things that I want to mention in my child's behalf. And in Romans 8, then, it conveys for us the beautiful, intimate relationship between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in direct relationship to us. Do not hide your face from me, O God, my Savior. This is kind of a, a redoing of the ironic benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you, be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So the psalmist says, don't hide your face from me. What that ironic benediction conveys is literally, the Lord look at me. The Lord look at me and he, may he smile at me because of who he is and because of what I have become in relationship to my Heavenly Father through Jesus Christ. So the psalmist makes the, the statement, do not hide your face from me, God my Savior, and God then in turn responds, I never will. I never will because of the status that you have been given through my Son, Jesus Christ. Sometimes we think in our lives, as we have trials and difficulties, and we think about a relationship that is estranged, a difficulty that has arisen because of this relationship with another person. And the psalmist addresses that. The psalmist says, even if you are estranged, even if your father or mother will forsake you, even if a loved one has turned their back on you, God says, I never will. Not because of who you are, but because of who I am. So, where we've come so far, Psalm 27, the Lord gives direction, the Lord is our strength, the Lord gives victory. Amidst the trials and the troubles of life, God directs us to his gracious compassion shown to us through Jesus Christ. God desires of us to come to him in prayer because he is our savior. Though earthly relationships may fail and falter, I have the constancy of who God is. So then the conclusion to Psalm 27 is, I'm going to be confident. I'm going to be confident as I see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. The land of the living is right here, right now. As I labor on in my life, I am confident because of who God is. It's another interesting statement to wait. Wait for the Lord. How do we wait for the Lord? We wait for the Lord to see God's plan and purpose as it unfolds in our lives allowing the light of our Heavenly Father to guide and direct us. And as we wait, we can be strong. Our heart can be encouraged as ultimately we keep our hope focused on the eternal joy of our heavenly reward. In Jesus' name, amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, Guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. The following week, we're going to be taking a look at a passage that Martin Luther said, even if all of Scripture would be lost and all we would have is this one passage, it would be sufficient. Two weeks to think about which passage that would be. Until then, go with grace, live in peace.